My name is Leslie Guider and I'm the number four first violin in the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Orchestra. I've actually been in the orchestra, although I, I can't believe it myself, for 38 years. Um, in fact, 38 years, two months and one week today. <laughs> well, I'm from South Wales and Welsh people, we're always singing. <laughs> and uh, so my earliest musical experience was in a school choir, also uh, playing the recorder at school, in primary school. Um, and as far as violin goes, um, I started playing the violin when I was 10, which is quite late really, but, um, and I, you know, the rest is history sort of thing, but my f actual first musical experience was singing in a school choir. One piece of music that I never tire of playing, I don't think I can just think of one. <laughs> um, I could think of one composer that I never tire of playing, and that's Elgar, also Brahms. So I would say anything by Elgar or anything by Brahms, I could play all day, every day, and never get tired of it. Um, music for a first time classical music listener, um, I think would have to be something easy to listen to, something that would capture their attention and perhaps dispel any preconceived ideas they may have about classical music. Um, so, I know it's probably <laughs> done to death, but I would say something like Vivaldi Four Seasons um, and some piece of music that people might actually recognise without realising that it's classical music. So something they may have heard on the TV as a theme tune or in an advert or something like that. So, for example, something like the Adagio from Spartacus, which was used as a theme tune to the Oneidian line. Um, and perhaps a, another piece would be Sibelius' Karelius Suite. And perhaps Mussorgsky picked us from an exhibition, which is full of variety, different varieties of sounds, different um, very quiet movements, very loud movements. I think somebody listening in a concert hall to that for the first time would be blown away by the loud bits and realising that, gosh, it's not amplified and it's so loud. I think that's one thing people find quite amazing, that there are no microphones and yet, wow, the sound that comes out of, you know, a relatively small number of people on the stage. If I could go back in time, um, I wouldn't particularly want to hear a premiere of anything, but I would love two moments to have been there. One is the recording session with Yehudi Menuhin when he was 15 years old, when he recorded Elgar's Violin Concerto with Elgar conducting. I would love to have been in that session, either in, as an observer or playing, <laughs> um, just to see how a recording session worked in those days, but also just to be part of that and to see Elgar and many women would have been amazing. And the second thing, um, I would also love to have seen the, the famous violinist and composer Fritz Kreisler. He wrote so much music for violin much of which I've played over the years, and I would love to have heard him play his own music and just to see if I'm getting anywhere near it, <laughs> which I'm probably not, but I would love to have, love to have heard him and seen him. Um, he was a very handsome chap as well, so I would like to have, you know, perhaps shook his hand or give him a little kiss or something, you know. <laughs> I would love to have seen him.